Hi, little chef. Today I'm off for lunch. That means we're going out to eat. So we hopped on the tender and headed towards Georgetown. There's a restaurant here called Chat and Chill, and that's where all the tourists go. They're known for their Sunday pig roast. And I know there's another tourist spot around here called Pig Island, where there's a whole bunch of pigs that you can pet. I wonder if that's where their supply is coming from. We beached the boat and headed up to the restaurant. Inside the restaurant, they had t-shirts from a lot of their visitors. We forgot to bring our boat t-shirt or even a sticker. We normally keep those on us, and that's how we leave our mark. I think a lot of people are getting comp burgers. What is it, like chocolate? Burgers. Burgers. Like what? Made into a burger. Do I go first since I'm losing? I got destroyed in cornhole and proceeded to swing on a sketchy swing. They also make conch salad right in front of you, and what's left is a graveyard of conch shells. We're on Bahamian time, so we waited about an hour for food, and we found out Captain Mark is a cornhole champion. Conch man! We finally got our conch burgers and got attacked by flies. They are so bad in the Bahamas, so we packed up our lunch and headed back to the yacht. We were trying to race back because we saw some rain up ahead and thought we could beat it, but no. Right as we pulled into the marina, the skies opened up. We pulled into the slip, got off the boat, and I went into the galley to make some dinner. Bye, little chef. Whatever, whatever she did, really freaking good. It was Brian's birthday, and Gina decided to make a special creamy for him. We don't know what she did. She's keeping this recipe a secret from us, but I was in charge of spinning it. She said she put coconut milk, bananas, banana pudding mix, and vanilla wafers. But she would not give us measurements. I think Gina may need to take over the Ninja Creamy content because this was amazing. I have no idea what she did. But she was trying to make him something for his birthday that didn't work out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a belated birthday present. Okay. We gave him the chocolate last night. Chocolate? You had some kind of chocolate. I had some. Uh, well, I made a chocolate? Yeah, some? I believe so. Oh. Mm. It's good. So she, she put, put coconut. Put cookies in there too. This is the story of Brian stepping on a sea urchin. The crew went out for a fun day snorkeling and Brian insisted on getting off the boat. So we dropped him off at this ladder and told him to walk home. The rest of us got safely back to the yacht. We had some lunch and then a few hours later, Brian returned with sea urchin spikes coming out of his toes. We googled it, and it said that vinegar was the best option. This is what happens when you step on a sea urchin. You gotta hold your toes. You get both of your big toes? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's not gonna be fun sitting like that for 30 minutes. I'm open to ideas. Stepping on a sea urchin, dump two toes into the steel container. It Get your toes back in the vinegar. Okay, bye, little chef. This is a conch shell graveyard. There are thousands of conch shells here because at this restaurant, they make fresh conch salad right in front of you. This place is called Chat and Chill. It's in Great Exuma, Bahamas, and they're famous for their pig roast on Sundays and their conch bar. As the chef on the yacht, as soon as we get into the Bahamas, we go searching for fresh conch. I'll get all of my conch in cleaned, but here at the conch bar, I was taught how to clean your own conch. Towards the top of the conch shell, you wanna drill in a little hole. You're trying to find where the muscle meets the shell. It just attaches at a singular point, so if you hit that, it'll fall right out. Once the muscle falls out, you'll see a big white chunk and attached is like a brownish or orangish color. That's the skin of the conch. You'll take a knife and cut all of that skin and tough muscle off, and you'll be left with a white piece of muscle about the size of your fist. Then you can just cut it up and use it in conch salad. Bye, little chef.
get everything packed up. Some clothes in this bag. My laptop in this bag. Uh, we're just leaving for a week and then coming back. Okay, razor. Let's see if I need anything in here. Toothbrush can stay. Deodorant, hairbrush, razor. All good. Anyone else hate touching microfiber? Bye guys, have fun. I knew I was gonna have a long night of traveling ahead of me, so I packed up a little roast beef wrap and then headed to the Georgetown airport. The flight was scheduled for 7.30 and we were delayed until 9.30. I finally got into Miami. I definitely missed my flight, my connecting flight. Um, so how does it work? Do they like get me a hotel? I don't, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. They in fact did not get me a hotel. They actually booked my next flight out of Fort Lauderdale, so I had to take an Uber up to Fort Lauderdale Airport. And now I'm sleeping next to a trash can. It's 3.14 a.m. They did not give me any vouchers for a hotel or transportation. I'm sleeping next to a trash can. And security doesn't open until 4 a.m. So I got rebooked on United and they're trying to make an electric airplane. Absolutely not. Here's a little recap. I was delayed out of the Bahamas and got into Miami late and missed my connecting flight. So they rebooked me at Fort Lauderdale Airport and I had to fly from Fort Lauderdale to Houston, Houston to Pensacola. As I was deboarding the plane in Houston, my flight to Pensacola was boarding. And it was three terminals down. I had to take two trains to get there. I was the last person on this plane. I thought it was gonna be an easy flight, but no. We had to circle around for a whole hour because of weather. I will never be flying again. I made it to Pensacola. We had to circle around the airport for a whole hour because home dude thought it would be cool to psych us out, go through a, a thunderstorm, and then pop back up to 30,000 feet. 